Jenna Garcia. I am the uh, Director of Educator Success at Next Tech. Next Tech is a nonprofit uh, in Indiana helping bring computer science to kindergarten through 12th grade students throughout the state. Um, and because of this interesting situation that we're all in, we've decided to bring to you this new idea of Tech Tuesdays, where we're bringing together people that not, aren't necessarily the typical tech people that you think of, but that use technology uh, heavily in their jobs. Um, and so, uh, as I mentioned, while people, people were joining, uh, this call will be recorded uh, and put up on our website as a YouTube link. Uh, and so last week's guest speaker is up there already, and then uh, this week's recording will be up there later today. Um, everybody will just uh, talk about kind of how the rest of this chat is going to go. Everybody's going to be muted uh, for the duration that Kyle is speaking. And then if you have any questions while he is talking, feel free to put them in the chat, and I will... Um, make sure that they are asked when during the Q&A session. Uh, then um, if you would like to speak during the Q&A, feel free to unmute yourself, that is acceptable. Um, and then when the Q&A is over, uh, we will share with you who next week's guest speaker is. Um, so that is that. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? We're good? Okay, Steph's good. Let's go. So. I would like to introduce all of you to Kyle Kaiser. He is an IndyCar driver. So Kyle, I'm gonna unmute you and you can take it away. All right, can everybody hear me? Cool, awesome. Well, first of all, thank you, Jenna, for the introduction and thanks, Jill, for getting me on board with this. I'm very happy to be here to talk with you guys. And, you know, I'm, like you said, my name's Kyle. I'm an IndyCar driver. I race with Humcos Racing, who's a team that's based there in Indianapolis, Indiana, right in Speedway. And I feel like racing is a sport that not a lot of people perceive as really a technological sport per se, or involved computer science as much as many other jobs. But you couldn't be further from the truth, to be honest. I kind of look at our race cars as one big computer. Uh, it's a huge computer that is constantly tracking all types of movement within the car, in which we have multiple engineers that are stationed on each car that have to make changes to the car, track everything that's happening and I'm the person that's kind of the middleman that has to communicate what the car is doing and how to make those changes to make the car go as fast as possible. So what I was going to do today was talk about kind of two aspects of racing that have a lot of technology involved. Number one I was going to talk about actually racing in real life and specifically my Indy 500 qualifying run from last year that I think would be a great encapsulation of what technology can do to make the car go faster. And then after that, I was going to discuss what we what we're drivers are doing now that we have this quarantine, that the race season has been delayed. A lot of drivers have been racing online using a built simulator within their home, many different ways that people can connect online and still be able to hone their race craft. So what I'm going to have Jenna do is she's going to play a quick video um, from my qualifying last year, and that'll lead me into my discussion about qualifying. All right, Kyle, I'm going to use you as a thumbs up if you can hear the audio. So I'm going to press play. Okay. Fractions of a mile an hour, 226 minimum. His minimum speeds are higher than Fernando. He crosses the line to start his last oh, lap. That's 220, 227.2 faster. If he's he can just hang got on, hang on, on, hang on, and you've knocked out Alonzo. This 23-year-old American could deny a two-time Formula One world champion a shot of Hyper Sports Triple Crown. This is one of IndyCar's smallest teams knocking over a global motorsport giant. Working turn three, he comes down below the white line, slightly high, but the car looks stable. I'm watching turn four apex speed. Minimum speed, 226 miles an hour. That's great speed. Let's listen to the radio. Yano Prince, Kyle, up as he knocks Alonso out. He has! Oh! Yano Prince has All right. 
All right. So that was a very special moment for me last year that was pretty much the moment that got me into the Indy 500. If we hadn't gotten that exact lap time, we wouldn't have been in the race last year. So that was a very special moment. Now, a lot of people don't see what happens behind the scenes for a moment like that that leads to you know such an amazing accomplishment. Now, what many people might not see on the surface is that we have, I mean, you could see at the end of that video there, all those people in the green shirts were my race team. And all those people come together to try and make that car go absolutely as fast as possible. And that requires a huge team effort. But a, a big portion of that team effort requires computer science, requires using technology to make the cars go to the absolute limit without going over that limit. And for example, what one thing the engineers like to do, so first of all, for every session that we go out, we have engineers that are plugging into the car, that are downloading data onto their computers, so that they're able to see exactly what every part of the car is doing. It, there's tracking systems that measure the tr distance traveled for the springs, that measure the distance of the car off the ground through a laser system. I mean, that thing is loaded with tons of tracking mechanisms. Those tracking mechanisms get downloaded onto a computer, which chart graph lines that basically just show you what the car is doing. And the engineers have to then decipher that data within their system or software that they're using in order to decide what changes to make to the car to make the car go faster. And obviously this is pretty big and kind of overloading, but to simplify it, you know, without technology, it would almost be a guessing game and relying entirely on just what I have to say to decide what makes the car go faster. Now, when you're racing an Indy 500, there's obviously very high stakes. So there's a huge reliance on the technology and the modeling systems within their computers to determine whether the changes that they're going to make are going to be the right change and whether it's going to be a safe change. So one thing that the engineers like to do is they have such advanced modeling technology within their computers they can input what changes they would like to make to the car and run a simulation within their computer and it'll give them approximately how much faster the car would go. That, that technology alone saves a lot of time so people don't have to guess, make a change, put the car on the track, run it, and see if that was a good change. Just by plugging in numbers into a computer, they're able to run a system and say, oh, okay, this change would actually make the car go faster without having to do anything to the car. So that's one example of how powerful technology can be in the field of racing. Another one is the car itself is loaded with all types of tools that I can use as a driver, that I can use as references to make the car go faster for me. The one big thing that is kind of easy, but that I use a lot is the light system on the steering wheel, the LED system, which is connected to the entire car and tells me when to shift the car. Now that can be modified or adjusted outside of the car to my exact preferences. And one of the things that we did during that qualifying session that was super important is I had a meeting with my engineer right before the qualifying session to adjust the way the lights popped up on my steering wheel, changing the colors, changing the sequence, changing the timing. And all that was adjusted through his computer plugged into the car right before we went out to the qualifying session. So it goes very far with how much the engineers can do. Unfortunately, I'm not an actual engineer, so I can't go into the deep, deep dive into what actually is working behind the computers. But I can tell you that without the computers and without the technology that we have in IndyCar, there is no way we could push the limit to the level that we've been able to push the limit to the cars at up to this point. And so I'll let that lead me into my second kind of topic that I wanted to talk about, which outside of actual racing on the racetrack, especially due to this quarantine and, you know, since we're not allowed to leave the home really is simulation, which is how a lot of drivers are able to stay sharp in their racecraft when they're not able to go out in the racetrack. Racing in general is super expensive. So even when you're not in quarantine, simulating is still a super important aspect of racing. So what I've done since the quarantine is IndyCar came out with a kind of to make up for that we all have to be home that they're doing a simulating race series through iRacing, which is an online platform where any, honestly anybody can download iRacing and go on there and be able to race online. But they also have professional leagues within the iRacing system. So to, to have your own iRacing system, you just have to have a subscription for the software. But for racers, they take it really seriously. And so they'll build very high-tech, advanced, 
simulators. And I wish I sent you guys a picture so you could see this, but go to my social media because I posted my social media is Kyle Cave Racing. And I posted a ton of pictures of my rig that I put together just this last week. And that includes obviously a gaming desktop or a gaming computer, pretty much a triple monitor system. I, oh, looks like I lost somebody or something popped up. But then we have a triple monitor system. We got a steering wheel, a very advanced steering wheel system with a motor in it so that you can feel realistic feedback, pedals that are connected to the computer. So everything's connected all together. And that gives us a realistic feedback of what it would be like to actually race in real life. Now, if it weren't for that technology, the only way we'd be able to get any practice on the track would be to obviously get the car on the racetrack hire a group of engineers and travel to a racetrack and run the car. So I feel like because of that technology, it allows drivers, it allows people that aren't race car drivers to be able to practice and get a real sense for what it's like to race on a racetrack. Um, outside of racing, outside of any racing, I'm also a college student. So I feel like technology from my perspective has been super important during this last few weeks because I haven't been able to go to my classes. So I'm living in California right now and I'm going to school at Santa Clara University to become a finance major. So I found that outside of racing, I've been able to obviously stay connected with my school and classes through Zoom technology like this, and then also been able to just continue my learning process. So it's been super important. Technology is crucial in every aspect of life and it's kind of become a way that we all have learned to live in the world. So whether it's in your professional career, whether it's in the regular world, it's obvious that technology is going to be an important aspect in our lives. And I think that the younger you can get started to really start learning about how to work with technology and how to utilize technology to advance yourself in the things that you're passionate about is really the important thing. Because you can apply computers, you can apply technology to anything that you like, but start playing around with how you can apply technology to the things you're passionate about and spending less time maybe playing games and more time trying to understand, okay, there's so many great tools available online, so many incredible tools that are applicable to the work world and applicable into the racing world or any sports world. So don't be shy with exploring how you can apply technology into the things that you're passionate about. And after that, I feel like I'm ready to open it up for questions if anybody has any questions. Awesome, thanks Kyle. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, you can throw it in the chat or if you wanna raise your hand, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you. I'll, I'll look through the chat here to see if I can find any questions. I didn't see any come in from above. I see one question from uh, Billy, it looks like. So he was asking why IndyCars, any interest in MotoGP or something similar? So that's a good question. So I started off racing when I was really, really young. So I was seven years old when I first started racing and I started in go-karts. So I never had personally been good on anything with two wheels. And the number one reason is because I fell off a lot. And so I found the beautiful thing about racing go-karts is you don't really fall out of the go-kart. You can't really fall off the go-kart. So it's kind of a silly answer, but the honest to God truth is when I was young, I was a little afraid of falling off a motorcycle. So I jumped into go-karts, loved it, and just stayed at racing things where I couldn't fall off of them. Awesome. So but thanks for the question, Billy. Uh, we uh, have a question kind of related to that. Colin asks, how did you find out that racing was your passion? How did you decide that two wheels wasn't for you and go-karts was the way to go as opposed to not being on wheels? That's a, that's a great question as well. So I started go-karting when I was very young and it was, when it started, it was initially kind of a father-son project because my dad would take me out to the go-kart track. He would wrench on my go-kart and that was something that I really enjoyed and that I, it was a special bonding time for us. But as I got older and I started thinking, I, I've always been competitive and I've always been a person who just loves sports. And for me, racing was that one sport that really made me feel excited. I, I looked forward to doing it. I woke up, I would dream about it. I would wake up and say, man, I can't wait to go to the go-kart track. So when you find yourself thinking about something a lot, really kind of dreaming about doing something, you could probably guess, okay, that's something I'm passionate about and something I enjoy doing. 
Now, obviously, if you want to translate that over to school, I remember when I was younger, I wasn't passionate about many of my classes, but the one class I was really enjoying that I did, although it was challenging, was math. So for me, I, even though I might not love it like I love racing, I knew that it was something that I enjoyed solving problems. I enjoyed the competitiveness and getting a problem right and the feeling you had when you solved the problem. So I, I, even though it was kind of indirect, I could say I, I'm actually kind of passionate about math more than any of my other classes. So when you find that subject that you feel like, okay, I'm actually kind of good at this and okay, I kind of enjoy when I get a problem right in this field, then you could come, kind of start leading into, I, I think this is a subject I'm passionate about and this is somewhere I can go with my career potentially. Awesome. Uh, McIntyre asks, why choose Indy over NASCAR? <laughs> so, I mean, I guess for me, IndyCar is kind of translating from open wheel where a lot of people that start in kind of like dirt ovals and start in like midgets that jump on or dirt tracks or kind of more go to the NASCAR route where the open wheel kind of formula areas goes towards IndyCar. So really it's just kind of a, pro a product of where I started rather than starting at a different, you know, lower level. But um, I, I respect both leagues very much. I think they're both, you know, talented individuals that race in both, both series. Awesome. Um, okay, we have a question from Tyler. So what would happen if a computer had broken down while you were fixing your car? Oh gosh, oh my goodness. I. I I hope that never happens, but basically without our computers, we wouldn't be able to really know what the car is doing on track other than what I have to say. But the terrible thing about that moment is we, at that point, we're not allowed to go on track to practice and find out. So we would have just had to guess, to be honest. It would have just been a guessing game and we would have had to just hope. But we most likely, because all the other teams are running, you know, the technology, we wouldn't have been able to make the race if it weren't for the computers. Great. Uh, when you first started getting into racing, did you ever think that technology was going to be such a major thing involved in it? That's from Jason. So great question, Jason. Um, no, I didn't. When I was younger, I didn't really fully understand how much technology played a role, especially in the higher levels, but really in general. I, when I got into it, I was seven years old. So I didn't really know as much about technology or really think about that. All I knew is I was going on the track and I was turning the wheel and you know, hitting the gas pedal. As you start moving up the, the levels, you start to learn more about, okay, I could see how one of the systems that we have to use is called MoTeC data acquisition. And at a very young age, they kind of start inducting us into this like idea of we need to start learning how to read the data. We need to start learning how to manipulate the software so that we can read what we want to read. And that was probably around 10 years old when I started learning how to use the software. So that just shows that very quickly when you get into it and you want to get competitive and you want to start reaching the top of the field, we had to start introducing technology into the racing system because it gives you such an advantage. Great. Um, we have another question kind of related to that from Melissa. She asks if you've tested with the new arrow screen and if you have your thoughts on it. So I haven't tested with the new arrow screen just yet because I... I don't think many people have, other than the people that have done preseason testing this year, there's not a ton of people that have, but I did use it in the simulator. So I can kind of talk about that. They introduced it because we did an IndyCar race this last week and they introduced it into the modeling system on iRacing. And I thought it was funky. It was weird to see that big tube kind of sticking up in the middle of the car, which honestly it was weird because I had to keep tilting my head to see around the bar. Um, I, I'd be curious to see what it's like in real life and how it relates to the simulator. Awesome. Uh, and then Aiden asks, how does the technology in an IndyCar compare to an F1 car, if you know that? Yeah, that's another great question. So I, I don't know all that goes into an F1 car because there's so much secretiveness that goes behind it, but it's definitely a lot more technology within an F1 car, mostly because they leave the rules open for teams to kind of make as many changes or as many technological advances as they can within a loose set of rules. So I think there's going to be a lot more options for Formula One versus IndyCar. Wonderful. Um, and then do you know the specs on your personal computer that you use for your simulation? That is from Tyler. That is a great question. So I can tell you the computer that I bought, but I don't know the specific specs of it. So I, I bought an iBuyPower gaming PC and it has the, I believe the Intel i9 processor in it. 
I, I wish I knew more about the specs of computers, but I, I did reach out to my engineers who are experts in the field and ask them what they thought would be a good computer to buy, and they recommended that one. That's fair. Uh, ooh, I think I know the answer to this question, but Justin asks, do you think there will be a virtual Indy 500 this year? Yes, I, I believe that there will be because they're doing this online iRacing series. But um, I think they're actually going to run the 500. I know they announced that they were going to do that later this year in August, I believe, is when they announced it. But I mean, obviously, with everything going on right now, we're hoping that stays. But for now, I think that there's going to be a lot of online racing. So if you haven't been tuning in, you guys should totally watch some of the online races they're going to be doing for the next few weeks because they are exciting. Awesome. Um, Stephanie wants to know what your favorite racing moment was. Definitely the video you guys watched earlier in this clip. I think that moment alone was a special moment because of the magnitude and the gravity of the situation. We were the underdogs. We were going against probably one of the most funded, biggest teams, not just, you know, in the country, in the world, McLaren. So I, I think being able to knock them out as the underdogs was a very special moment for me. Awesome. Uh, McIntyre wants to know what you spend the most time on, the computer science aspect, the driving aspect, if there's another component. Yeah, so I think in terms of racing, I all my time on the computer for racing is spent probably on iRacing or on simulating programs. And that's just downstairs in my dad's basement that I set up literally like last week. But in terms of, you know, my personal computer, I think a lot of it is spent time with my schoolwork doing my schoolwork there, sending emails, or just outside of school, you know, working on projects that I have for my sponsorship. Because there's, a, you know, a, an underrated aspect in racing is that you have to go raise money and you have to help connect yourself to big businesses. So I use my computer and use tools in my computer like PowerPoint or Excel or other softwares inside of my computer to help model or come up with ideas for how I can present certain things to certain sponsors. Wonderful. And then we have a question. Uh, is there a way that all of us are able to watch you in online racing? Yeah. So they're, they're doing like, they're live casting it or broadcasting it live on YouTube. Or if you just go to the IndyCar website, they usually have the link right when you open the, uh, the website landing page and you click that and it'll uh, direct you to YouTube. Wonderful. Uh, well, I think I think we're done with all the questions. Melissa thanks you for online racing. Her and her husband would have, would have been lost without it. They were yelling at the TV just like normal. Uh, oh, that's awesome. So if there's no other questions, Kyle, I want to thank you so, so much for joining us for our second ever uh, Tech Tuesday. Um, thank you for sharing with us how computer science and technology impacts you in racing. Um, I am going to just share my screen really quickly so that I can introduce for next week. We have Carly. She is the VP of Customer Experience at Pattern 89. She will be here next week, uh, April 7th, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern. So have a wonderful day and week, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next week.